Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this channel of mine is the home of the Granny Square. It's all about that crochet goodness and documenting my journey as a crochet designer. With a bit of knitwear too. Anyways, I am in the United Kingdom, I'm in England and we have really, really warm weather. Um, for a couple of weeks now, it's been around between 20 to 26 degrees Celsius, which is unusual for us. Normally we have like that sort of weather later on into summer. Um, I've been really, really enjoying the weather. It's really made, it's helped with the lockdown because I've been in my garden a lot, but I will get to all of that in good time, in due course. I am going to talk to you about all this good stuff. So there's lots and lots to cover. I think I'm going to be here for a while and so I'm going to timestamp below all the different areas. I'm going to talk about, in no particular order, the order will be down at the bottom, the my patterns, my granny garms. Um, I'm going to talk about granny squares, finished whips, um, or finished objects, whips, um, acquisitions, and oh my garden. So, um, they will all be below, as I said, and I'm going to go straight in with my designs. Um, and some of these sort of also fall into the whips and the finished object category, but this is where I'm starting. So, in case you are new, and if you are new, hi, hello, welcome, so glad you're here. But if you are new, you will quickly come to realise that granny squares are my thing. Um, and so I actually have four granny square pro four? No, one, two, three, four, five granny square projects around me right now that I'm going to show you. Um, but uh, I have a place in my heart for the humble granny square. And so I am working on a series of patterns that use the granny square. Now I actually finished my first project that I'm going to show you in April I think but I submitted it to my tech editor who's wonderful by the way this month May and I got it back and I've got some amendments to make and then it can go out to testers Ooh! like it feels real now and I'm really 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 excited so I finished this project April slash May I think it was the very last few days of April because I then started a new project to celebrate. This is a granny square jumper. It does have a name but I'm yet to reveal it. Whoa look how much I'm blowing out now. Look I've got the curtains shut, I've got my lights on, I had a darker top on and you couldn't see me. I put the bright top on now you can see everything so we're just gonna have to work with it okay. I made this jumper out of granny squares. If I cover my face, <laughs> then it doesn't blow out. Look at that highlight though. I'm not even wearing makeup. Anyway, this jumper has a name and it will be revealed when it is um, ready for testers. I'm actually gonna post um, the name in my Patreon um, this Saturday coming, so. It'll be the first Saturday in June. So they will be the first to know, in part because they helped me pick the name. Um, Patreon is a monthly subscription service and I've got my tribe stars on there and they get weekly updates on what I'm working on. They get a lot of behind the scenes footage. There's also the monthly Zoom chat that we have, which I love. And then um, I'm actually going to be recording a Tribe Star only vlog so that they can see some of the projects that I'm refusing to share at large right now. Because I want to share some of it, but I also just, anyway, we'll get into that. Let's carry on with this. So it's a granny square crop jumper and it has a cowl neck. It uses double knit yarn, which I think in America, do you call that eight ply? I'm not sure, maybe you call it double knit as well. Um, I mainly used Stylecraft and then some yarn I got from a supermarket here called Audi. So it's basically just budget yarn. Um, and as I said, it went to the tech editor. He's been amazing and 
yeah, I feel like this one is gonna be a winner. It's got um, simple sleeves. I used, I think it's UK single, UK double crochet, American single crochet, because we have different terms to make it extra complicated. Um, I did a crochet cuff knit, a crochet rib cuff. <laughs> I also did um, the granny squares for the body. I've done a cow neck because I want it to be snuggly. Um, and it's got a little bit of ribbing at the bottom as well. This hits me around my belly button. There are There is a section in the pattern um, that you can extend this. All you need to do is add another row of granny squares to get it to the length that you want. That is no problem at all. Um, and I'll add in the weights that you'll need to do that as well. So that is pattern number one. I'm putting it in finished objects for May because I have still been working on it in May and although you don't see it there's a lot of work going in on the pattern, on the tech editing, on the changes and whatnot and so I have put in quite a lot of time on that but the day that I submitted it to my tech editor I carried on with my routine, I got up and started on the next project I want to submit to be edited and that is this. This is my jumper dress, made out of granny squares. It's called Promise. Um, and for any long-term viewers, you'll know that I actually made this last June, June 2019, and I made pretty much all of these granny squares and put it all together whilst my brother was in ICU in critical care um, because he had a life-changing accident last year. And granny squares is something I really held on to. Um, and I've already vlogged about this before where the name came from. I've called it Promise and I've been into all of that before but I will go into it again. Look at my face. Come on. Better. I will go into all of that when this is ready to be released. Um, fun little fact for you. I love my quotes. I love my inspirational, motivational sayings. And so all of my patterns have little quotes included. Um, I submitted this pattern, almost said the name then, whew, and decided this one was next. Um, and so I graded it um, and I realized I'd made a size too big for myself. Um, so I had to take out 40 squares. I took them out. I, because I did this join as you go, continuous join as you go, it meant that all I had to do was find the end and undo them. So I took a panel, the entire length on both sides, and then I took a panel around the bottom. So I made it smaller that way and that way. We're gonna have to keep playing with this, aren't we? Sorry, guys. And, um, and um, tried it on and it fit much better on my body, but it was too short. So I put back in another 10 squares, which actually meant I had to redo 10 squares because um, I had completely taken them out and then on some of them, I actually picked different colors just so that they wouldn't clash because fun fact, I try not to let the colors touch each other so that you get this random put together view. And I know I shouldn't be sidetracking, but I do want to do a video on how I put my granny squares together because I am asked very, very often, it's like one of my most frequently asked questions, is how I choose the colours for my granny squares. And I've got a couple of methods that I always go to, so I want to do a separate video on that. I might do that next week. So I took the granny squares out that didn't need to be in there, um, put another row back in just so it was a length I was comfortable with, and again, that's the beauty of when you make your own clothes, you can add and take out. I, so I finished this, it comes to just above my knees, but I really want to make one that's like ankle length, so it's more like a maxi dress. Um, I also would quite like to make one in cotton, so I could do a lightweight summer one. Oh, the possibilities. This is why I love the granny square, because 
there are infinite, infinite colour opportunities, different colourways. Give me a box of yarn and I can make so many different granny squares and yet they all look the same because it's a granny square so it gives it that cohesion. But then not only that, there are so many different yarns out there, so many different weights and different fibres and they could all go into so many different garments that I just, I feel like I've been doing this for a long time. But that's okay because I love it. Um, so I put it all back together and then I did a really simple um, cuff. It's just two rounds of double crochet to me, single crochet for America. Same around the neck and around the hem. And so Promise is now finished. I need to do the finishing touches on the grading um, because I learned a couple of tricks when I got back this one and then write, not write the pattern up, but smarten the pattern up, make it fancy and submit this one. And then that's another one ready to be tested. Um, I've got one tester lined up for this and I've got one tester lined up for this, but I don't know which sizes they're going for yet. Um, but I'm gonna make sure I post all about that on my Instagram and in my Ravelry group as well. Um, and Tribe Stars, you get dibs, of course, you want to test, you can be my testers. So, I just love this. I also love that this is quite a neutral colour palette. And then this is just like, wah! It's not in your face, but it's a lot more eye-catching than this. So I styled this with a leather skirt and my Doc Martens. It also looks great with my high-waisted jeans. Um, and then just like a jacket on top, like I've got a leather jacket. Faux leather jacket. And then this I will st style with my Doc Martens and it's just like an all over. I just love it though. It's actually inspiration for another project I'm working on now. So that's Promise, that will be submitted to um, my tech editor in June because this is the last day of May and then that will be ready to be tested too, which is quite good because I think I will release that pattern in maybe, maybe July or maybe August, which then means anyone on this side of the world, we're starting to go more into um, heading towards winter so you can get one ready for yourself um but anyone on the other side you might be able to get one ready for the like the last of your summer if not you can get it ready for um the last of your winter if not you can get it ready for the following one confusing myself sorry so that's two of my patterns that i'm working on i'm going to say that I have also made a huge stash of granny squares, a huge stack of granny squares. This is just some of them. I counted this morning and there was a hundred and something, I'll put it on the screen. I've just, I posted this morning to the Tribe Stars and I already forgot their number. Hundred and something, it's on the screen now anyway, um, of these and it is for a design, one of my granny garm designs. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what just yet. So I'm going to move into finished objects and I'll pick these up in a couple of minutes. In terms of finished objects, other than my patterns, I finished a dishcloth. I knitted a dishcloth for myself. I made some like a couple years ago and then didn't really look after them. Didn't weave the ends in before I used them and it unraveled and all that good stuff. And um, I kind of ended up just falling back into buying store-bought and then because I haven't been doing the shopping, I have been, I haven't been near anyone other than like my boyfriend in 12 weeks now, 12 weeks, 12 weeks on Wednesday. Um, 
I haven't been going to the shop and I forgot to ask him to get me some sponges for the kitchen and I was completely out. I'd used my last one to scrub my bathroom. So I needed some things I could wash up and it's not an option to just nip to the, the, nip to the shop. And I didn't want to wait till the next week or try and order online. So I just knit one and it took me like 30 minutes or something. I think it would have been quicker if I actually paid attention to what I was doing. I didn't have to frog here and there, tink rather. I think if you rip back crochet, you frog, but if you rip, if you tape back knitting, it's called tinking, which is knit backwards. Anyway, um, so I finished a dishcloth. I took a little bit of footage of that before I used it, so I put that in. It's just a really simple cotton dishcloth, and I really like using them, and I do want to make some more. I want to make a couple slightly bigger so that I can have them designated as my floor cloths. And I'm going to, around the edge, I've got some pink cotton and some yellow cotton. And I'm going to do a border just so I know, like, pink means floor or something. And then I want to do some slightly smaller ones for my face that I can use in the shower. Um, and I might put yellow around them or something, just so that when they go in my wash basket, I know what should be washed with what so I can put the ones for my face with my towels and the ones for the floor can go with my other cleaning rugs and things like that yeah so that's a finished object and then the other objects aren't so much finished entirely but I finished sections so let me explain I've been knitting an Aran and I actually finished the back piece and so it's not a finished object, but it's a finished section. Um, and I'm going to show you it here. So this is the back piece for my cardigan. And I'm really, really, really pleased with it. Really, really proud of myself. It took a lot of brain work to do this. I started on the sleeves and I know a lot of seasoned knitters have told me that's not the way to do it. And I know that but I started on the sleeves because this was just so daunting and the sleeves were something a bit smaller that I could wrap my head around. Um, I did try starting on the front, but I think it's because it had this diamond cable in it and it, it was too much because in terms of knitting, I've done a couple of dishcloths, I've done a couple of pairs of socks, like vanilla socks. Um, I've made an oversized jumper which used like knit and purl that was it and um I think that's it I think that's it so I am a very like newbie knitter I haven't knit a lot of things I'm not that fast at it but I want to make Aaron's my grandmother has always knitted Aaron um my entire life that's all that's one thing I can remember she knitted Aaron and she made crochet the crochet isn't something that I really remember her doing when I was younger. It's the knitting that Aaron, she had these big needles jammed under her arm and she'd be clacking away and yakking away and watching the TV and this would just come out. When I do it, I have to write out the pattern for myself and sit there in semi-silence and really pay attention. So I'm not quite where she is, but when I started here, so when I got here, I was a lot more comfortable. It was taking me like half an hour per row at the beginning. Mm. And then I know there's less stitches up here, but by the time I got to like here, it was like, I don't know, 15 minutes, just zoom, 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 done. And I also got a whole lot better at spotting my mistakes, um, dropping down stitches, maybe like six stitches so that I could fix it. So I do feel a whole lot more confident and I feel really proud of myself. Um, the only thing that I would like to know, and if there's any, I know there's a couple of Aaron knitters out there, Esther's one of them. As soon as this was done, I messaged her on Instagram like, look, because I know she appreciates the Aaron. Um, Sarah, one of my tribe stars, I know you love the Aaron too. I would like to know how when I'm decreasing to carry on the pattern. I feel like, maybe it's this side. It's not as bad now I look at it, but as I was doing the decrease across the diamond, I feel like I just lost the pattern a little bit. So I don't know if there's like books that are helpful or videos. I love books. Um, 
but that's something that I want to get a bit better at. Other than that, I love it. So I used Arun yarn, I'm using Arun yarn. I think Arun in America is possibly worsted wheat, but it's the one above double knit. Um, I think it's like 10 ply or something. And it's this really nice color. And I, I know we decided on what it was called, but I forgot now. I think we went with like oatmeal, biscuit, stone, something very neutral and lovely, which is quite funny because, <clears throat> excuse me, I crochet like this and I knit like this. <laughs> um, and then it's got the moss stitch, it's got this diamond um, cable with the moss stitch in it. That's a simple, I think it's an, is it a six or an eight stitch? Six stitch cable. It's got the blackberry stitch in the center, which I think some people call popcorn, but I think the traditional was blackberry. Um, and then it's mirrored, so it goes out the same way. So I finished that and I started to look at the sleeves, which were the first things I did. One of them's fine, another one, it just had faults throughout it and because I've spent so long on this and put so much time into fixing it I decided to completely rip out that sleeve and redo it um, and so when I got to that decision I put the project down and started these so I haven't really touched it um, but that's my plan for the week ahead I've got a week off work and I plan on finishing the sleeves and hopefully casting on the fronts at the very least for this um, because there's a couple more Aaron projects that I have the patterns for that I really 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 want to start so I found the easiest way to get through this in the end was to designate an hour a day and sit for that hour and do nothing but that and it really quickly built up um, I actually had I think it took me a couple of weeks of not really giving any time to get to about here and then I realised if I didn't sort of commit to it a bit more it was never going to get done and so within, I'd say within about 10 days I had the rest of this done. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. It does look quite big but I don't mind because it's, it means I can put a layer underneath it. Plus I make all of my clothes cropped, so that's probably why I feel like that's big. So that's a finished object for me. The other finished object is this blanket. Now I haven't joined the squares together and that's because I don't have the joining colour. But what I have done, oh no I've messed it up, is I've finished all of the squares and I've weaved all of the ends in. <laughs> so I decided when this project was finished that it was time to start on another granny square project. And I love to make blankets, but for some reason I told myself I had too many and I didn't, that I shouldn't be working on them. I don't know why we do these things. But anyway, I've ignored that and I have started making blankets again. So Ida sent me a picture of her mini blanket. So this is inspired by the um, Easy Peasy Blanket by Meet Me at Mike's and she did larger squares, like 11 rounds or something. And I've made a big one and that just needs to be joined like this one. But then she sent me pictures of mini squares. So I decided I had quite a bit of this gray that I would use it all up and then I would put all of these colors around the outside. And I went with colors that have, I've been inspired by my garden. So they're colors that you would find in my garden from the sky to the flowers to the grass. Um, and so I actually have 63 squares And I've sewn in all of the ends. Oh, 
on them all apart from these three and that's because I want to buy some more of that bottle green Ooh, this one so that I can have a few more bottle green ones in there um, and so I have I've weaved in the ends on them but I've left them ready to have that bottle green and then the rest of the green will go into stash and other whips so that's fine so that one is a finished object because I can't do any more on it until I get the bottle green and some more yarn and I was planning on doing that buying that yarn ready for this week off but I actually held back because um, the weather's so warm that I don't want a big blanket on me at the moment I would rather be working on smaller things so I've decided I'm not going to place that order to get the joining yarn until maybe until the weather starts to cool down a bit more which wouldn't be sort of towards August, September um, and then there will be projects that I'll work on in the winter so for now I've made a little note that that's a 4 mil hook because at some point I'll come on here and say what size hook did I use so I used a 4 mil hook and I am going to put that all to one side now upstairs in my HQ so I can pick that up when I get the joining yarn it's not set in stone that I'll wait till the weather cools down but it just seemed a little bit there's just no point buying yarn right now when I've got so much stash to work through and I might not pick up the yarn I buy because I won't want it sat on me so yeah um, so that's all my finished objects for me I hope you're trying to keep track of how many granny squares you think I've made so there was 10 that went into there I only did 50 of this spring blanket in May. I actually did some of it in April. Um, and then on to the next whip. Which are these. So I've used a 3.5mm hook to make three round granny squares. I've weaved the ends in on some of them as well. Um, using double knit. All of my projects use double knit and less stated. Um, but Aaron uses Aaron, and sometimes I use four ply for socks. Other than that, double knit. And it's all just stash, so it's either um, Stylecraft, um, Boys, um, Pound Shop, Wilkinson's, all sorts of double knit yarn. I do want to try some King Cole yarn as well, because they have quite a lot of glitter stuff. So I might get myself some when I place my yarn order. And I have made lots of different colourways. Um, and I'm going to do a video on how I pick my colours, how I put them together. Because I do it so often now. Um, but I made stacks and stacks of them. And as a little sort of sneak peek what I do is I pick out a colour my box of yarns just here so say I pick that one I will do 12 squares with that as the outer edge so I actually have quite a chunk of some of these colours because I did the 12 um, and then sometimes I just get a bit bored of that colour so then I end up picking out random colours <laughs> but I'll do a video on that for you so there'll be 12 the reason I picked 12 and again I'll go into all this in my other video is because I needed 166 colours um, and I I had sort of two weeks to get them done so that for this week off that I've got coming up I could start putting it together so I worked out I needed like at least 12 squares a day because I already had made some um, so then I just pick a colour per day and then I just do the, the 12 squares Um, this is my favourite at the moment, this yellow, but I don't, I don't have a lot of it, so there's not 12 of them. There's actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there's 9 of them. And I wasn't really going to put bright colours in, but pff, I really like them, so I put it in. Um, I actually really like, that's one of my favourite squares at the moment, 
it's a uh, yellow, like sunshine yellow, navy, and then a fluorescent pink. So it is blowing out a bit, making the navy look black, but I promise you it's navy. Um, and then another one I really, really like, again, is this cream. It's got the fluorescent pink and then an orange in the center. If I cover my face. That fluorescent pink's just blowing it out, but I really, really like them. I like that one so much, I'd quite like to make a whole blanket out of it. Because it would look so nice. So, yeah. Um, so, I've done... They're, I think they're the only four that are rounded and finished in cream. But then I've got baby blue. I have got more of a royal blue there. I have got loads in the grey. Fuchsia. I've took some footage of all of the squares. So it's stacked up. So I'll put that in so that you can see them. That these squares are to try out a pattern that I've had in mind for a little while um, for a garment so they will be wearable and I'm going to just enjoy making that on my week off um, playing around with it if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out and if it does there'll be another pattern coming to you um, yeah I'm enjoying that so I've made a hundred and something of them this month. I'm not going to make any more today. I'm going to take a break and weave in a lot of the ends. I've not quite got the 166 because I didn't stick to the quota every day. Um, but there's, there's not that many to go. So it'll be fine. Then the last whip. That's an ongoing whip and you've seen it a few times is this one. Let me just unbury it. This is my blanket called Together and I started this on my first day of working from home um, when coronavirus started becoming really big news in the United Kingdom. Um, which was the 18th of March and then I think we officially went into lockdown on the 23rd of March or something like that um, and so I've been making a five round granny square every day with a 4.5 mil hook and I said before um, I was going to do this just during the lockdown but actually I think things will be very different for quite a while and so I decided that I'm going to carry on making it until we get um, until social distancing's gone really, until that's no longer a thing. Um, and I'm hoping that that would be really soon, but if it's not, then I will do this blanket and when it gets to quite a considerable size, I'll just start a second one. Um, so originally I did a row, it was seven squares, so one week was a row. Um, and then I got to the ninth week and realized that this is gonna be ongoing for quite some time and I don't want a long, skinny blanket so I decided that they're going to be um, the width of the blanket will be 14 squares so a fortnight so I'm on to my second quarter of the blanket um, it is up to date but I need to do the ends I seem to like have really kept up with my ends and then these two granny square projects have really come on and I've decided to just ignore the ends so I'll be doing that over this week um, and this is today's square May 31st in light of everything going on I put that in there everyone's in this together and together we can all make a big change so it's really really wide I don't think I'm going to have to get it all in the shot. If I, if I twist like that, it's almost, it's pretty much more than my wingspan and I'm five foot five, so it's getting on to almost six foot wide, which is two meters. It's how far away you should stay from me. <laughs> wow. Um, and then it's nine squares in length at the moment. And once this second quarter's caught up, that will be nine squares in length. 
and then I'm going to basically double it in length so it would be 18 squares in length yeah so it'd be 14 by 18 and I have used scraps and stash entirely for this um, I have a great big tub of yarn that's all my double knit yarn and I pick out colours and I just add a square on my only rule is, is I don't like the colours to be touching um, so I try to make it so that this square here those colours won't be in any of these surrounding squares and that just then gives it that randomly placed look even though you spent quite a bit of time picking out the colours um, I don't make my square every day all the time sometimes I have actually left it I think the most I've left it is 10 days and then I've had to add on 10 squares so for example this morning I added on was it 10? I added on quite a few this morning to, just to finish it get it up to date so I added from here to here this morning um, some days I pick out the colours but I don't have the time to put it on and other days I just need a block of time to sit and update it so if you wanted to start one you could start one from now you could backdate it you could just make your own rules up I do think even once all this has passed and I'm no longer making this the blanket for this reason that I will still have a daily blanket just because it's something really nice to pick up and have ongoing um, because if this was for example this blanket I knew I wanted 63 squares so I dropped everything and did all 63 squares and it was done within a matter of weeks whereas this is a little bit slower and there is quite a lot of enjoyment in it because I'm watching it build up but there's no huge pressure to get it done because it's a daily project so I will be continuing with the premise of a daily project once all of this is done definitely um, there's some really really cool colours in here like this one the fluorescent pink with the royal blue looks great um, that one kind of reminds me of a cream egg hmm. but yeah it's just got all the colours of my stash in there including bottle green which isn't showing up well it is bottle green I promise and that's what I want to edge these which is why I'm going to get another ball and then it will then mean that I can put more bottle green in here which will help keep it really like fluid continuous so I'm really enjoying that um, and so that brings me to the end of all of my whips for May I've been really focused in my projects um, but I have swatched for a couple of other projects knitted projects actually um, one of them being the dipped tea by Knit Diaries I also swatched for the Alone Together jumper by Lage I'm not sure of her surname I'll put her tag on the screen for you I swatched for one and it was really bright pinks and I wasn't sure if I'd wear it and I think I would wear it but it'd be more like um a lounge jumper I, I can see me wearing it with my pajamas and I bought the Tilly and the Buttons um, new book I can't remember what it's called now so I'll put that on the screen so informative my brain's just gone blur um, and it's got different patterns in there and I wanted to get the book where you could make pajamas or are the pajamas in this book? I think the pajamas are in this book. And um, I can see me having like a really cool coloured pinks. I can see a lot of my nightwear being pink and then having like a pink knitted jumper to pull on with it. So I'm really comfy. Um, but it's not really a colour scheme that I think I would wear day to day. Maybe I would. But I think there's a very... My style is very... Um, I know what I want to wear so I'm very grungy I'm very um I know what silhouettes I like 
and I'm not opposed to wearing bright colours like these but I know most of my go-to will be more like this um, but then when it comes to being really snuggly and comfortable at home like fluffy pink yes 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 so maybe I will maybe I will make that in the pinks but then I was also playing around with swatches in different colours <sighs> So many colour possibilities. Um, I also swatched for no, I'm not gonna tell you about it. I'm gonna leave it, see when I get around to making it. So that's all of my whips. So that leaves granny squares and gardening. Um I'm gonna do a garden tour. I'm going to do a separate video on that for you. I spend so much time in my garden. So, 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 so much time. Um, it's gone from having a couple of, like, seeds planted and it took me, like, ten minutes to water everything. It takes me about an hour to water my entire garden now, like, the grass and all of the pots. Um, my patio area is my love. I love spending time on there. And I have got courgettes, um, so I've planted enough seeds for my dad's allotment for Brad's garden, his vegetable beds, um, our vegetable beds I should say, and also my patio. And so on my patio I've got courgettes, I have got strawberry plants, sunflowers, sweet peas and quite a lot of flowers out there. And then in the conservatory I have got and in I've got a green little greenhouse as well so I've got beans like green beans um, sweet corn parsnips carrots oh I've got potatoes outside um, and then Brad's got a mix of those in the beds but also he's got all the cucumber plants um, and then I've got peppers grow oh, I've got so much growing and I love it and I spend so much time out there that um, I'm gonna do like vlogs out there I don't know I think I'll probably do voiceovers on it because the neighbours are out there a lot now so I feel a bit weird sat out there talking to the camera <laughs> it's a little bit silly a little bit strange um a little bit silly but I do want to show you more of that and I'll continue to put the little bits in the weekly vlogs anyway just so you can see how it's progressing because I do spend a lot of time out there crocheting um so you end up seeing all of all of the plants around me anyway. Um, everything's doing pretty well. The courgettes are a bit fussy and they need treating because they've got mildew. Other than that, oh, and I lost a strawberry plant. It's just sort of wilted and died, but it's okay because I bought 10, so I've still got nine. Um, other than that, everything's doing really well. The sunflowers are coming on. They're really tall now. Like. I've got one that's taller than me, so that's pretty cool. I think they're gonna be jumbo. Um, and then I dug a big plot in my front garden to have wildflowers. Oh, so I can't wait to show you that as well. Um, I've gone through so many bags of compost. So, so many bags of compost. <laughs> so if I'm not buying, I'm not buying yarn, but I've bought a lot of seeds and compost and books. I'm going to do another video on the books that I've been buying as well. There's lots of knitting and crochet related books and some gardening. So I think I'm going to do a review on those as well for you. Um, so then that takes us to Granny Squares. So last week I asked you to take a guess as to how many Granny Squares I had made. And I am going to, I've got my Mac here and I'm going to have a look at some of your comments. Okay, so. <laughs> right, they've loaded. Okay, so, I need to apologize because I called you Mimi. Your name is Mimi53, but that's not your name. So I said, hi Mimi, but that's not your name. So I'm sorry. Um, but you have guessed 150 squares or more. Um, Sarah, you have said 300, close to 300 squares, if not more. 
Um, and then Ursula, did you put a guess? I think you said you were talking about your weather out there. And then Esther, 250 squares. Tyrion said 350. Beverly said 376. And Joyce said 280. Like these are all good guesses. And then Shanita, you said 658 and I was like, I'm gonna disappoint you. <laughs> it's not that many. Um, Ida said 301 squares. Cindy, 325. Um, and then we've got Shorty got low. I don't know what your name is, so but that's your tag. You said 275 squares. Katie Griffin, you said 569. I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm not reaching that amount. I tried, but uh uh. So, drum roll. <laughs> And thank you all for your comments and joining in. Um, it's really good to have that interaction. So I made a total. Now, I wrote down all my granny square details in my Tribe Star post this morning. And some of the numbers have already disappeared out of my head. So, let's check the post now. Just so you can see, look at some of the images that I post on there. They get all the good stuff. I love putting them together and being like, so I'm working on this, but don't tell anyone. Can you see this? Let's make it bigger. Look how good that looks. I'll post on my Instagram at some point, but I love taking my daily pictures, my weekly pictures for the HGDC posts. Okay, so I put 31 squares in on together. I put 50 squares in on my garden blanket. I did 140 squares, so I'm 26 short for my total on this mystery project. And I put 10 squares in on promise, which means I made a total of 231 squares. I'm blown away. Because 140 of these, that's massive. I did them in a couple of weeks. So I might set myself another challenge just to see how many I can make in another month. It won't be next month because I don't have another Granny Square project on my mind at the moment. But as soon as I know what I want to make, I think I'm going to set a little challenge for myself. I think if I was to order the yarn so that I could make the this blanket and also had another garment, I think I could actually get a huge amount done. So if you think it was only in the sec the last couple of weeks of May that I really started to commit to this quota that I set for myself. And when I did my garden blanket, I was surprised at how many I made. And then same with these. So any of you that commented like 300, I think I could definitely exceed that. 600, I think I would have serious wrist pain. Serious wrist pain. Because you'd need to say it was another month that was 30 days i'd have to do 20 squares a day which means 20 of these a day and that's quite a lot every day for a month 300 i could take that on so 231 squares which means i think the closest comment was let me check. Shorty got low, said 275 squares. Oh, there was actually another one for 475, but nope. Um, 
Was there any? Oh, there was a Joyce said 280, so Shorty got low, still the closest. Esther said 250. Oh, I think you might be. Oh, and then Mimi, it's not Mimi though, you said 150. So the 250 is the closest. So Esther, you are the closest. I don't have a prize in mind, but I do in some way want to congratulate you. So leave it with me, I'll have a good think. Esther was the closest, 250. I actually did 231 granny squares in the month of May 2020. Wow. So tribe. That's everything for today. That's all of my patterns that I'm working on, my finished objects, my whips, my... I did a little bit on my plans, but not a lot on my future plans. Um, just because some of them are mysterious. Um, and I'm just really trying to focus on like one, two projects at a time. So I'm not getting too far ahead of myself. But I did swatch in a few things, so watch this space. And as for acquisitions, there wasn't anything in May. I haven't purchased yarn this year. No. And I haven't purchased any books this month relating to yarn. Um, and there wasn't any gifts, so no acquisitions. Ah, oh, I might have got a pattern though but I'm gonna do a separate vlog on patterns. So yeah, that's everything for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope wherever you are that you're safe. I hope that you're having those important conversations. I hope that we can just continue to spread kindness and be the change that we want to see. So tribe, I'm gonna go now and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care.